Hello and welcome to Model Essential. This video clip will show you the basics of how to plank the hull of a wooden model ship. Planking the hull of a wooden model ship is not difficult but it does take some thought and preparation. So let's start at the beginning. The first step is to identify the keel and the bulkhead frames of your kit. Separate these from the plywood sheets. We always dry fit these parts first. This means don't apply any glue just yet. The fit of the bulkhead frames into the keel should be firm but not tight. You may need to use a small flat file to fractionally adjust the width of the slot in either the keel or the bulkhead frames. In this model, the bulkhead frames will be flush with the top of the keel, so there may be a need to adjust the depth of the slot to achieve this. Once you're satisfied with the trial dry fit, you can start applying glue to the bulkhead frames and insert them into the relevant slot of the keel. To make sure the bulkhead frames remain square to the keel, while the glue sets use bulldog or foldback clips. Some models have bow blocks and or stern blocks. These blocks are used to provide a large surface area on which to fix the planks. You can see the bow and stern blocks on this model. Some models require you to also fit the false deck at this point of the construction. Fitting and gluing the deck in place adds strength to the overall structure of the keel and bulkheads. Now we come to one of the most important parts of preparing the hull. After the bulkhead frames have all been squared to the keel and glued in place and the glue is set, it is now time to prepare the bulkhead frames for planking. Take one of the first layer of planks that will be used and lay it across the bulkhead frames. You will see that at the bow the plank does not touch the full face of the bulkhead. See the photo. The same is the case at the stern. See the second photo. Across the midship bulkhead frames the plank will lay flat on the bulkhead frames. It is, it is most important that the planks lay flat on the full face of each bulkhead frame to firstly allow a strong bond between the planks and the bulkhead frames to be made and secondly to ensure that there are no humps or hollows in the hull surface when planked. The tools you'll need to prepare the bulkhead frames for planking are a good file, one face flat and the other half round and a sanding block. You will use these to bevel the face of the bulkhead frames to ensure the planks rest on the full face of the bulkhead frames and not just a sharp leading or trailing edge. As you progress use a plank to lay it over the frames at various positions to check the bevel. That is the plank should touch the full face of each frame as it is bent around them. If you do not have a hollow spot or one or more frames it can be built up using slivers of timber glued to the edge of the frame. The whole process of beveling and checking is known as fairing and is extremely important to ensure that when planked the hull is free of bumps and hollows. So take your time and resist the temptation to start planking before the hull is properly fared. It cannot be emphasised too strongly that the fairing process is the single most important step in building a model ship of which you'll be proud. Take your time with this process. The next step is to consider the keel at the stern of the model. The area between the bottom of the bulkhead frames and the bottom of the keel is called the deadwood area. You can see this on the photos. This area will be planked with both layers of planking. However, when the stern post and rudder are fitted to the model, there will be a significant difference in the thickness of the deadwood area and the stern post and rudder. To ensure there is no discrepancy in the thickness, you will have to reduce the thickness of the plywood in the deadwood area before planking by about half. Then when you have completed the first layer of planking you will again reduce the thickness of this planking in the deadwood area by about half as well. You will need to fractionally adjust the thickness comparing with the stern post and rudder until you are satisfied. We will now focus on the principles of planking the hull. There are many approaches to planking the hull. Some approaches are relevant to a sharp bowed hull, others are relevant to a bluff or rounded bow hull. As you progress with your modelling, you will settle on an approach that suits you. 
Planking the hull is not technically difficult, but it does require some thought and study so that the principles are understood. It also requires some patience, but once mastered, the process is straightforward. There are a few points to remember. Use a mini plane to taper the planks. Always taper the lower edge of the plank, that is the edge that will be closer to the keel. Prepare two planks together, one on each side of the hull. It is most important to fit and glue the planks in pairs, one on each side of the hull, as this will minimise the chance of the keel being distorted or bent. Now thinking about the first principles. On the model you are building, spend a few moments with a dressmaker's tape measure and measure from the top of each bulkhead frame around the outside of the frame to the toe of the bulkhead frame where it meets the keel. You will notice that the measurements around the bulkhead frames in the mid-ship area of the model are greater than the measurement around the bulkhead frames at the bow or front of the model. We always assume that the midship bulkhead frames are the largest distance and it is at this part of the model the planks will be at their full width. From your measurements it will be clear that if you are to fit one plank along the full length of the hull you will need to taper the planks that fit across the bulkhead frames at the bow of the model. We will now consider a few examples. Let's turn to thinking about the midship bulkhead frames. It is assumed that the planks laid across the midship bulkhead frames are at their maximum width. We need to determine how many planks will fit into the area between the top of these bulkhead frames and the keel. As an example, let's say the measurement from the top of the midship bulkhead frames 4 and 5 to the keel is 120 millimetres on the photograph. The question is, if the width of the planks we are using is 5mm, then how many planks will fit across the midship bulkhead frames to cover it completely? The answer, if the measurement is 120mm and the width of the plank to be used is 5mm, then divide 120 by 5, which gives us 24. This means 24 planks will be needed to fit into the area. These planks laid across the midship frames will not be tapered or reduced in width across these bulkhead frames. Considering now the bow bulkhead frames, now let's say the measurement from the top of the bulkhead frame 2 to the keel is 80mm. As 24 planks will have to fit into this area, then the plank width at bulkhead frame 2 will need to be reduced. The question is, what will the width of each plank have to be to fit 24 planks into this area? The answer is if the measurement is 80 millimetres then divide 80 millimetres by 24 planks that is 3.3 millimetres will be the required width of each plank at bulkhead 2. The same approach can be applied to determine the plank width at bulkhead frame 3 etc. At the stern bulkhead frames you will recall that the area between the bottom edge of the keel and the bottom of the bulkhead frame at the stern is known as the deadwood area. When making your measurements of these stern bulkhead frames, include the deadwood in your measurement. Across these bulkhead frames you will find the measurement from the top of the bulkhead frame to the bottom of the keel will be greater than it is at the midship bulkhead frames. Where this occurs you will be inserting short triangular planks known as steelers or wedges to cover the extra distance. The use of steelers or wedges will be dealt with later. Fitting the first plank is very important. Determine from the plans or your written building instructions the position of the first plank. In real shipbuilding it was usual to start the planking at the keel and work upwards. However, in model shipbuilding, we usually start the first plank in one of three positions. One, with a ship which has a flush or straight upper deck, the first plank is laid with its upper edge level with the deck surface or parallel with just below the level, the deck level. Two, in the cases of those models in which the upper deck is either two or three distinct sections at different levels and the first plank is commonly run along the line of the middle or main deck then follows its natural course both fore and aft. Three, many models that feature 
below deck open gun ports will require the first plank to follow the line of the gun ports and will run immediately above or below a row of gun ports. After you have determined the location of the first plank, you will need to bend it around the curvature of the hull both fore and aft. You will probably have to use a plank bender to achieve the required curvature. Take one of the planks to be used and place it in position. Gently spring the plank around the bow. At the point where the plank starts to bend, mark this as point A, as shown in the photograph. Next, gently spring the plank around the stern. At the point where the plank starts to bend, mark this as point B, also shown in a photograph. We are going to be very systematic in our preparation of planking. So take another plank and transfer these points onto it. On each plank mark an arrow pointing toward the bow. Also mark each plank P for port and S for starboard. We will now do this for all the planks we prepare. We will also make all planks in pairs. These first planks will not be tapered. From point A use a plank bender to gently crimp the plank toward the bow. See the photograph. Trial fit the plank. If needed, use the plank bender again by gently crimping between the previous crimps. This will increase the curvature of the plank. Repeat this process until you are satisfied with the plank curvature. Turning now to point B, use a plank bender to gently crimp the plank toward the stern. See the photo plank? If needed, use the plank bender again but gently crimp between the previous crimps. Repeat this process until you are satisfied with the curvature. Now that you have shaped the first plank, it is now time to fit it in position. Note again that the first plank will not be tapered. Use a PVA wood glue to fix the first plank in position. See the photograph. Make sure that both planks, both port and starboard, allow that follow the same line and are a mirror image of each other. In large models, the first two, three or even four planks fitted are not tapered. It is important to check that the first planks are symmetrical. Check that they are a mirror image of each other at the bow and the stern and see the photographs. The hull planking approach presented here divides the hull into at least two areas. For large models, the approach can be used to divide the hull into three or more bands. Each band is planked separately. So we're going to create two planking bands. So step one is on the midship bulkhead frames mark a position approximately halfway to the keel from the bottom edge of the first plank that you've fitted. The same distance down on each midship bulkhead frame and a distance which is a multiple of a plank width. For example if the planks are 5 millimeters wide then the distance down the edge of each frame to your pencil mark should be say 45 millimeters or 50 millimeters or 55 but the same distance on each midship bulkhead frame. Step two is take a second plank and temporarily attach it at the positions you have just marked on the midship bulkhead frames. Do not glue this plank in position and repeat for the other side of the hull. And step three is let this plank follow its natural course over the bulkhead frames to the bow and stern of the midship bulkhead frames. At the stern the plank will be terminated at the junction between the keel and transom. At the bow let the plank follow its natural course. Step 4 is temporarily attach the plank to the rest of the frames making fine adjustments if necessary to ensure that each plank is a mirror image of the other. Checking the corresponding measurements both port and starboard on the first and last frame should show up any errors. You now have four planks in place, two on each side of the hull. See the diagram below. The hull has now been divided into two bands, an upper band and a lower band. We will now carry out the calculations to determine the plank width at each bulkhead frame in each band. We will now focus on applying the planking principles to complete the first layer of planking within the two bands created. For band A, for the model 
you are building establish a table as shown below representing the number of bulkhead frames you will also need to include the transom as well to, de to determine the plank width at each bulkhead frame use a dressmaker's tape measure to measure the distance between plank 1 and plank 2 at each bulkhead frame record these distances in your table see below this table is for the model of the mermaid. For the mermaid the distance between plank 1 and plank 2 at the midship bulkheads frames is 45 millimeters. The plank width is 5 millimeters therefore there will need to be 45 divided by 5 equals 9 planks to be fitted within band A. Using the measurements made ab above divide each by 9 number of planks to determine the plank width at each bulkhead frame and record in your table. Taking a pair of planks, taper them to the required width at each bulkhead using a mini plane. Use a plank bender to bend the bow and stern of end of each plank. Note points A and B that we discussed earlier are where the bending is to start. Fit and glue in each place these planks starting from the underside of the first plank. After fitting each pair of planks, recheck the measurements to ensure the correct plank width. Adjust as necessary. Repeat this process until band A is closed on both sides of the hull. See the photo below. Once band A is closed, remove the temporary planks. Now we're going to turn our attention to band B. The next step is to place the garboard plank in place. The garboard plank is the plank that is placed alongside the keel. It is not tapered. However, it will need to be shaped at the bow to follow the curvature. Place another plank alongside the garboard plank and shape it as well, without tapering. Place a third plank along the side of the second plank just fitted. At the stern, allow this plank to follow its natural curvature over the deadwood area. You will see a gap will appear between this plank and the second plank fitted. A steeler or wedge will be used later to fill in this gap. See the photo below. To fill in the remaining gap of band B, again establish a table as shown below. Repeat the process of taking measurements on each bulkhead frame and record in the table. At the midship frames, determine how many planks will be needed to cover the area. Using the measurements made above, divide each by the number of planks calculated to determine the plank width at each bulkhead frame and record in your table. Remember, after fitting each pair of planks, recheck the measurements to ensure the correct plank width adjust as necessary. Repeat this process until band B is closed on both sides of the hull. As you close the gap, the last plank on each side will possibly need to be shaped and fractionally fitted to fit into the remaining gap. Next you will need to fit any steelers or wedges in place to fill in the gaps across the deadwood area of the stern. After the glue has set, trim off any other over overhangs of the planks. Use wood filler to fill in any hollows in the hull and sand off any bumps if needed. Sand the finished hull using a medium and fine grade sandpaper. The first layer of planking is now complete. We're going to turn our attention now to the second layer of planking. The process of completing the second layer of planking is essentially the same as for the first layer, but with the added advantage of having a solid foundation on which to work. The second layer of planking is a decorative timber such as walnut, tanganyika, teak or mahogany. The thickness will vary according to the type of model you are being, you're building. Usually though it will be 0.6mm or 1mm thick and 5 or 6mm wide. Using the same approach as for the first layer of planking, determine band A and calculate the plank width as required creating a table. For band B, once the planking of band A is complete, fit the garboard plank and any and an additional two planks above it. Continually take measurements as you progress to close the gap between the bands. Once you have closed the second layer of planking, fit any steelers or wedges in the deadwood area. Sand the hull smooth and finish with a clear matte or satin polyurethane finish.
you have now completed the second layer of planking. I hope this video will help you with your hull planking of a wooden model ship. At Modeler Central we have an extensive range of video practicums on model ship building. Visit our website to see our full range.